Oh, paisanos, today I'm gonna show you how to cook up your own Super Mario Brothers music. Just like Ma used to make. Mwah. Okay, so here's Mario. Take a look at this guy, bro. How are we gonna make music for this guy? What does he do? What's he all about? History lesson! 1981. Mario made his first appearance as the protagonist in the arcade game Donkey Kong. But back then, he used to be called Jumpman. And that's because he was the first video game character that could jump. Man. Speeding in the eye of gravity was his whole selling point. So after Donkey Kong, platformer games are now a thing, right? And you got all these other hype beast clowns like Pitfall and Pac-Land trying to jack Jumpman style. They've all got these stiff early 80s jumps where you gotta commit to a direction and you can only jump at a fixed height. But in 1985, the plumber rose from the sewage. And I guess you could say he got the jump on the competition. <laughs> Welcome to Super Mario Brothers, where you can jump low, you can jump high. You jump into blocks, you jump over pits, and you jump to the top of the flagpole. And I know what you're gonna say, right? There's the underwater level, so what are you doing there? Your free stroke is a backstroke breast style... No. We're doing underwater jumps, baby! Even the fireballs are jumping. Massacre! So when it comes to the soundtrack for a game about jumping, the classic Mario theme that you're hearing right now, and pretty much every other Mario theme that came afterwards, have been written to capture the bounciness, fluidity, and vertical virtuosity of this Italian stallion. Even though the piece was originally written for the humble bleep bloops of the NES, you just know that if the audio technology permitted, that it's supposed to be an approximation of jazz and funk. But I'm not just saying that because of the Mario themes that came afterwards. This is true for the original 8-bit Super Mario Brothers theme at a compositional level. And that's all because of this concept that's central to jazz and funk music, and that's syncopation. Syncopation is when emphasis is placed on rhythms that are offbeat. To demonstrate, we're going to represent the beat with a kick, and right in between each main beat, a hi-hat. Now that we have our beat on the grid, let's throw the Mario melody on top of it. Papa Koji was cooking up syncopation when he wrote this tune. You can hear and see that most of the notes don't line up with the kicks and the beat. And that's exactly why even in this stripped back form, the Mario theme makes you want to shake what your mama gave you. But let's see what happens when you get these exact notes and move them around so there's no syncopation whatsoever. Oof, Maron, it sounds terrible. Candace, you gotta cancel my two o'clock. The groove is dead. Send his wife some flowers. Okay, so we know that we want the notes in our melody to be syncopated, but what notes do we use in the first place? Against better judgement, I'm gonna teach you the top secret formula to making a classic Mario tune. So if you don't see any more uploads from me after this one, I'm probably being waterboarded at Nintendo headquarters. Okay, step one. You establish your phrase or motif. Here's Super Mario World. Then, you repeat that idea once or twice, but you make a slight variations in the melody and harmony. Following that, we're going to contrast our idea with a big variation or a development of some kind on the idea. The point of this part is to play with the listener's expectations that you set up in the first two parts. And finally, you want to finish up by either bringing your idea closer to its original state and or wrapping up the development you made in the contrasting idea with a cadence. In this case, the formula is applied over the course of two sections of the song, but the scope of the structure varies each time. Here's a few more examples. but I think we're about ready to put our rip-off together. Let's start with the main motif. Beautiful, we got all three C's. Catchy, simple, syncopated. Let's hear a variation. All right, now let's go in a different direction by fragmenting the motif, basing this little downward leap at the end. And now we'll do another variation of the main motif that brings us to a half cadence. And now we're gonna repeat that exact same formula to complete the melody. Right on, that's sounding pretty Mario. Before we start arranging this piano for a full band, we're going to talk about chromaticism, which is when you use notes that are foreign to the key or the mode that you're playing in. Chromaticism in the main Mario themes often appears very briefly in passing, in the form of approach tones or approach chords. 
This just means chromatic notes or chords that very briefly embellish the music. In the case of Mario, they're often used to make the music sound more energetic, bouncy, and lighthearted. To demonstrate, I'll play the opening guitar part from Mario's Sunshine's Delfino Plaza theme. Even though the second and fourth chord are chromatic, the part feels fun and bouncy because the chromatic notes blur into the energy of the rhythm. Listen to how much more dissonant it sounds when I change the rhythm of these exact notes to emphasize the chromatics instead. Okay, it sucks. Let's go back to our ripoff here. We're going to check out how chromatic notes are used in both the melody and the harmony. Diatonic chords, chromatic run of the melody, all diatonic key, still diatonic. Oh, a little spicy there. Hang on a second. Oh, hey, oh, oh, hey, oh, 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 hey, oh, 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 hey, oh! So by the look of the theoretical physics in these chord symbols, you need to be Archimedes of Syracuse to write a Mario song. But look, in all seriousness, when I wrote this part earlier, it was just like, <laughs> piano go pling. But if we understand this passage as a series of chromatic movements, I think it makes a little more sense. Let's check out the piano roll. You get five voices per chord. The bottom voice is mostly just moving up chromatically. That second lowest voice is playing the same F every time. So it's functioning as a drone. And the top three voices alternate between moving down chromatically and just repeating the note that they last played. So because our voice leading here is fairly smooth and the chords move so quickly, the chords that look like the blueprints for a nuclear weapon on paper are actually just happy-go-lucky Mario chords. Good for the whole family. Okay. But it's about time we start arranging this music for a full band. So let's get that melody from the piano and put it onto a baritone sax. Put it onto an alto sax. We'll keep the piano playing the chords, but we'll change the rhythm to make more space for the other instruments. Oh, and every time our melody goes doo -doo or doo -doo, we want to emphasize that rhythm with our arrangement so it really sticks out. Now, we can do that by doubling those notes in the piano and we'll put in these cheeky little grace notes to give it that Mario bounce. Speaking of doubling, we want to get the texture nice and thick, so let's double the piano part on this voice synth. And finally, we remove the bottom voice from the piano so we can put it on a bass guitar that locks in with the drum bit so we can get this baby sound funky. Okay, it sucks. I reckon we can fix it up if we use a bit of secret sauce, huh? Mmm, that's better. So what we did there is using the lowest notes of the piano part as our bass, we filled the groove out with cool fills like jumping up and down octaves and chromatic passing notes. Alright, so you put it all together and you get this. Sounds good! But how can you have a Mario song without a big unison hook in the introduction? It's like, if I sing... Then you expect... Every main Mario theme does this. So in our case, let's get the whole brass section in unison with our sax to play this tune. We'll get the bass playing the same tune, but we'll add some embellishments to just make it a little more funky. And we'll get the piano and the synth playing in rhythmic unison, but they're also adding out to the harmony. Play it all together, and it sounds a little like this. Mamma mia, that's a spicy meatball. But speaking of Italian cliches, let's go check out the final bar of the main melody. Did you see what I did there? See, this chord progression of flat 6, flat 7, 1 is known by many different names, but most fittingly for our purpose as the Mario cadence. And just as a way to really cement that we're doing a Mario ripoff here, why not throw it in our piece? But that's enough out of me, let's hear the ripoff.
thank you so much for watching my video. Hope you enjoyed. If you want to see more detailed information about Mario, music theory, and analysis, I put a list of some great videos on the subject in my description. Anyways, something something, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.